Welcome back, welcome back. We're at uh, episode six of True Perspective, New Believers Bible Study, and my name is Anthony. I'm a bold believer in Jesus, and I'm here with my brothers, uh, Nick, Jacob, and Eddie, and we're just here to walk alongside of you and, and just give you guys the scriptures and what it is, and we're diving into a verse, I believe, the most famous verse that even if you don't believe, it, you've heard of John 3.16, so... Um, Want to go ahead and read that, Jacob? Or does anyone else have anything to add? Well, I mean, if you're on episode six, uh, scroll back to five. Just catch up a little bit if, you, if you're not there yet. Yeah. Or just jump into this one. If so you're he, just he's talking to Nicodemus. Mm-hmm. Still talking to Nicodemus. Um, kind of explained to him already that he needs to be born again and kind of how that works. Um, and he's kind of rebuking him, right, for not yeah. knowing already and uh, telling him that he's not really catching on to what he's saying. He's not believing it. So now he's going to share the gospel, right? Yeah. The most famous verse, I think, in the entirety of the Bible, John three sixteen. 16. Um, is it on you? All right, we'll start here. Okay. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Pause right there. Amen. It's the gospel, right? right. Simple, yeah. just belief. In Jesus, and you're not going to perish. I sacrificial love. You know what I mean, he doesn't require all these crazy things that we can't do. It's simple. It's faith. But then, you know, some people still choose not to believe it. Yeah, that's all. That, that that's what's so great about this verse because it breaks down what love truly is. Like, mm. I mean, for God so loved loved the world. Talking about people, right? He gave, he gave, and so it was sacrificial, right? Jesus came to die for us, right? So love is, is not selfless, but it's self or it's not selfish. It's selfless. It, it's something you, that you give, not expecting anything in return, right? God so loved the world, He gave, He gave His only begotten Son, man. Someone born, someone born of of a. That's why the virgin birth is so important, because if God was was born of of Joseph, He would have had sin. He wouldn't have that fallen nature. But He was. He was born of a virgin, and if we don't believe that, then you can't believe in the gospel, man. Because he he bore our sins. He was sinless. He became sin, right? And that's what's so great is that's the gospel, man. John three sixteen. God so loved the world, loved people. He he didn't love the earth. He loved people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Amen. Yeah, and even that verse two where it says "begotten Son," that word means. Begotten means one of a kind, yeah, the only, yeah. the only, right? So it's not like you know Jesus was created. He, God's just saying, "This is my only like son, true yeah. son." Right? Yeah. We all come under that through adoption by faith in Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah. But um, yeah, great verse. Does anyone have any? How did that ring to you as a new believer? But yeah, what about the first time you guys heard that? Like, we're not just heard it because everybody hears it, but Austin like really, where it made like click in your Earth. mind. Austin, Austin three sixteen is kind of when I really. But I'm, it sounds like a joke, but to be honest, that's really the only time I ever heard it when I was growing up. Mm. Yeah, they didn't talk about this in the Catholic Church because mm. yeah, it wasn't it wasn't this simple. Yeah, I mean, right, and I'm not knocking that, but I am um, because it is it, it, it needs to be this simple, and right. people, need, people need to know that you don't need to add anything or subtract anything from it. That 316 is is enough. That's I mean, it. It's just. You know, Damien Kyle said one time, um, it's, it's, well, it, I don't want to butcher it, but he basically said, uh, nothing more, nothing less, and it's enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, what that reminds me of is what we're doing, right? Just keeping it simple and Jesus alone. And Psalm 19, 7, if anyone wants to turn there and, uh, that that's what the Holy Spirit really involved me right here. John or Psalm nineteen seven. Let me see. Let me try to pull it up here. Nineteen seven. I got you. Well, you know, while you're looking for that, is is, is I want to bring up a point that 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 sometimes I mean, because I've heard this verse since I was a younger man. Yeah. Right when I was in high school, I heard guys that were in to the Word already at a young age saying this to me. Yeah. But I wasn't listening, although I heard it and I, I kind of understood it, right? Like what, what they were trying to tell me, but I wasn't ready to listen for it. Like I wasn't paying attention to it. But now as we, I'm in the word, like you said, Anthony, it's so clear. Yeah, it's so clear that it's right there, guys. 
all you have to do is believe this. Yeah, that's right? it. That's it. But if you're not ready for it, you're not going to listen. You're not going to yeah. hear it the same way. Yeah. Soil has to be ready. God's divine grace has to come penetrate your heart. Mm-hmm. You have to want it. You have to truly hunger and thirst for it. Because nothing that we say here on this podcast is going to truly convert you. Mm-hmm. It has to be the work of God. And it has to be yeah. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We're just trying to make it easier for Jesus to penetrate your heart. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. If it's confusing, you're going you're gonna to close the book. We're just trying to be the tool in his hand that he uses, right? Instrument yeah. in the Father's hand. Yeah, because in the end, I mean, even when the Apostle Peter said... I believe that you are the Messiah, right? The Christ. Uh, Jesus tells him, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but yeah, the Father in heaven has revealed it to you, you know? Yeah. So in the end, you know, God has to reveal himself to you. These are just things that either hopefully, you know, help the soil be ready, plant the seed, water the seed, but in the end, God's the one who's going to harvest that seed. In. Yeah, he brings an increase. Mm-hmm. You want to go ahead and read that? Psalm 19.7? Yeah. Uh, Psalm 19.7, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Perfect. Bam, that's it. That's all we're trying to do. He's making wise the simple, right? The law, the instructions of the Lord, the, the things that direct us and guide us is perfect. It's complete. It's 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 without error. It's without fault. Like everything is right there, right? It's it, it's so important because it restores the soul. It mm-hmm. converts the soul. It brings us back. I mean, because when... I was lost in the world, man. I, I thought I had it all under control. But until I started reading the Word, and started, until I started reading His instructions on how to live my life, that's when my soul, my spirit was restored. You know what I mean? It, it came back. And His testimony, His statutes are, 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 are you know I mean? They're trustworthy. You know what I mean? They're faithful. We can hang on to it, and we can just grab a hold of it and run with it. And, and, and it makes, He makes the wise simple he makes it easy for us to understand we it's just we overthink it i know me personally i know i overthink it yeah no you're right and i think that's what it's kind of hard you know because like it's not tangible right so we said it's like the wind so there's not nothing that you can do and i think that's why a lot of people will turn to works because it's like okay i have this in my hand i know i did this so now i'm saved it's not about that it's by faith that's it you can't see it you can't grasp it you just got to believe it right and so yeah grace through faith but at the same time, like, like I said, we we work for for to serve Him because of the, the Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah. And because of through faith. salvation, through salvation, like DK always says, right? Like I I always put it like this: it's grace through faith, right? So grace is, is like the car dealer is going to drop off that car, a brand new car, and we'll call it the car faith, right? And then it disappears. So so grace dropped off faith. And then we have to go out there, put some rims on it, dial it up, doing things to make it look nice, drive it out of the driveway. Faith without works is dead. You know what I mean? So it's not what saves me. It's that it's that faith that saves me. It's that grace that came penetrating my heart, right? And But I still got to go out there and, and do a little bit of things because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. Spread of love. If God's Spirit's in you, Good things are going to come out of you. Amen. Right. It's That's... a pro- it's a it's a byproduct. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we'll keep reading here. Uh, verse seventeen. You can read it. Yeah. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Stop right there real quick. So 17 is telling you what the goal of sending Christ is. This was his goal, right? Not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So even though not everybody's going to come to faith, he says, I'll still go. Right. And the ones who did come to faith, it was worth it to Jesus. He said, I'll I'll stand up and I'll go die for them. He'll do do it for one. He'll do it for one. Yeah. So that was his goal in coming the first time. Um, but again, and he's saying, so that's why I came. But if you move on to uh, verse, verse 18, 18, he says, because he didn't come to condemn, because if you don't believe in him, it says you're condemned already. Right. So his goal wasn't to come condemn you. It was to provide a way of escape yeah. because you already stand condemned before yeah. God. Amen. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Already. That's where your position is right now without Christ. 
because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And yeah, you know, people say that Christians are narrow-minded or whatever because there's only one way to God. Well, it's the truth. It's right here. It tells you. Yeah, it tells you, right how, Honestly, it's dishonoring to think that there's multiple ways to God when he yeah. sent his own son to die for you. Right. And you're saying, okay, that's a, that is a way, but there's all the ways too. No. Yeah. God sent his only son. Can you imagine? None of us would do that. Yeah. Send right. our kid to go die for somebody, let alone our enemies. Yeah. God did that. And we're going to say that there's other ways. No, it's only through faith in Christ alone honoring his sacrifice and what he's done for you. Yeah, because there's like all these cults and all these other religions. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. They make you do good. They they make you do good. You do good to get to heaven, right? But here Jesus is saying, I'm the only way. Right. I'm the only way, the truth, and the life. You know what I mean? So when we place faith in him, we don't have to be worried about, oh, did I work enough to go to heaven? Is it my good going to outweigh my bad? Is this? No, that's stressful, man. You know what I mean? All we got to do is surrender and place faith in Christ and know and believe. That's it. Just believe. It's so simple. Like, mm -hmm. we overthink it and, and we try to do all these things to get into heaven. But all we have to do is believe. Believe. That's according to John three sixteen, right? For God so loved the world, whoever believes, believes in the only begotten Son, right? So when we place faith in, in false religion... I'm not saying that there's other gods and different, you know what I mean, religions, because there is. But to to me, they're false, because I, I don't have to work to build to heaven, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the Bible says clearly they're false, and there's no other way to God, right? And matter of fact, uh, and, you know, it might be uh, crazy to hear, but a lot of those false religions do have something supernatural about them. They're demonic. Yeah, exactly. Keep you away yeah. from knowing the truth, knowing Jesus, knowing that's the only way to heaven, right? And, and that's the simple gospel. That's the simple truth. So, um... I think another thing too, I kind of wanted to add, um, that'll help, you know, that helped me as a, like a new believer is, is understand there's words that you read. Um, and sometimes you just kind of glance over them. Like you'll hear believe a lot. Right. And, mm -hmm. and all these, especially in John, I think he says it quite a bit, but, um, it's an action word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's not like sit, it's, it's not like a, it's more than an intellectual agreement that God's real. Yeah. Right? You can't just say, you can't just acknowledge him and be like, oh, it's real. But to believe in him is more than just saying, hey, you're God, and that's enough. Like, that's it. No, it's, yeah. it's the, the action of belief is is the byproduct. Like what we were saying earlier, the things that you're going to do through that faith, that you're allowed to do because of the faith. Yeah, you believe it's going to turn, it turn into trust. You're going to be secure with that belief. Yeah. Yeah, so the original word in the Greek is pisteo. Yeah. It says, to think to be true, to be persuaded, to credit, place confidence in, um, to credit, have confidence. Yeah, so it's entrusting, entrusting yes. a thing to one, his fidelity. That's why, that's why I said believe on Jesus, right? right? It's yeah. believe upon, put your faith. Like when you do that trust game, you know what I mean? You're like, what happens when you would close your eyes and you put trust in, in your homeboy? He's gonna, he might, well, you know, make you fall just to laugh. But when you fall upon the Lord and you put your faith and trust in him, he is never going to let go. Mm -hmm. He's always going to be there. And, and I hold strong to that, man. I, what I've been through and what I've overcome, if we're not preaching the true gospel and the, the word of God, then all what I've been through is, is nothing. It's in vain, you know what I mean? Yeah. All that pain I went through is yeah. worth nothing if I'm not preaching the true gospel. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, just keep it simple. That's it. Believe in Jesus. Truly, truly believe. Uh, verse 19. And this is the uh, condemnation that the light, so light is referring to Jesus, right? So yeah. You could even, when you read this, just uh, replace the word light for Jesus. Yeah. This is the condemnation that the light, aka Jesus, has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than Jesus or the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, or Jesus, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Yeah. So, I sent, yeah, I mean, anybody have any comments on that one? I know for me, like, when I was in the world, right, that, that that's just the true statement. When I first read that, I was like, yeah, okay, they're talking about me. You know what I mean? Because when I was in the world and in darkness, I didn't want to come to the light. I didn't want to see Jesus. I didn't want nothing to do with God. 
I, I, I didn't believe that. Oh, I don't know what you mean. But as soon as I actually dove deep and started reading for myself and truly believed, that's when the light was shining bright inside of me. And I knew it, it says right here what to say. It was, it was a work of God. You know what I mean? It, it was a, a, a my translation. It was says it was rod of God, but that that's a little um, all it means is what you're saying. And I mean, Nick, it's in, wait, as far as what it, it, in, in birth, done, the, done in the sight of God. Yeah, in the sight of God. That's all it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got what I got out of this is that um, it, he this part kind of reminds you that he's not here to to condemn us, um, to free us, right? And so. Yeah to free us from the shame that we have. Like what I read in the NIV, it says everyone who does evil hates the light. I think, you know, obviously that's, it. the logic behind that is there's a lot of shame I think we, we carry with us. And so when we have, when we carry that with us, it makes us harder to come to the light um, because we think we're going to be condemned for it, but we're not. We're, we're, we, you know, through repentance, we're given that freedom. Yeah, it's just really, you're not even understanding who God is, right? So you're continuing in your sin. And some people, it's because they like what they do. They love sin, right? Yeah. It's good for a time. But then others, like you're saying, they don't realize that God's forgiving. So they just try to, they feel ashamed. They stay where they're at. They double down. But really, if you just come to him, yes, he exposes your deeds. Not to the world, but I'm saying he He knows what you've done. Yeah. Everything, every secret sin, everything. He knows it all. But he's also the solution. Yeah. So you come, he exposes it. But he also is the solution on your behalf, right? He's the one who died for you to pay for that sin. So there's no more need to be ashamed. Your debt's cleared. It's cl completely paid in full, all in Christ, right? And so that's what he's saying. But he's clearly pointing out some some guy, some people love darkness rather yeah. than Jesus because their deeds are evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, right? And does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. And so that verse is kind of funny, right? How do you do the truth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to point out right there. I mean, if you put God first, right, you, you shouldn't have any shame in it. Yeah. So he's just saying, hey, like, I mean, I, that's how I kind of took it when I read it. Like, so it maybe uh, seem plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So you would, like, don't do anything that God wouldn't be approving of. That's how simple it is. You know, if you can adopt that into your, I mean, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's hard, but that is how simple it is. Right. That's how, that's how difficult it is. That. My my translation says, he who practices the truth. Yeah, it's a good word. Well, so the actual word for does in the Greek is, I don't know how to pronounce that, po, poeo, poeo. And it talk, there's a couple of different ways you could translate that. It says abide or agree. So he who abides or agrees in the truth. Mm -hmm. um, he who commits to the truth. Uh, who, who He who deals the truth. I think, in my mind, I think it should have been translated from the first one, abide and agree, right? Because we have to abide in Christ, right? And so it's, I think it's Sid, and, you know, it's just my personal opinion, because there's a bunch of different um, uh, definitions to this word, but he who abides or agrees with the truth, Jesus, right? Jesus is the truth and the light, mm -hmm. comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. So again, what we're talking about is once you come to faith, the Bible says that Christ lays out the good works for you to do, right, when you're saved. And so when you are born again, you're going to come to God because now you know that you have his righteousness yeah. and the things that you've done, they've been done in God because he's the ones that have you that for, for those works, right? He's giving you that knowledge. He's giving you that knowledge, giving you that grace to step forward, right, to, to be obedient, all that stuff. And so that's the difference. The difference is, again, is Jesus, yeah. right? That's that's the difference. And just to kind of reiterate what you said, even in my book here, in the in the study and the notes down here, for between uh, 319 and 21, it says, um, and this is reference to what they, how they kind of interpret it, but many people don't want their lives exposed to God's light because they're afraid of what will be revealed. Mm -hmm. They don't want to change their ways. They don't want to be, they, or don't want, don't be surprised when these same people are threatened by your desire to obey God and do what is right because they're afraid that the light in you may expose some of the darkness in their lives rather than giving into discouragement uh keep praying that they will come to the to see how much better it is to live in light rather than darkness yeah. you know and that basically just says hey go spread the gospel that's, that's, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what it's like hey yeah. just give them love that's it, but it's funny though because when you talk about that you, you we, we all have family members who who want to stay in the dark yeah right because they know but they see you changing and they see you 
you know, yeah. following the word. And um, some will say things about you and some won't. But when the time comes when they really need the light, they're, you're the first one they think of. Yeah. And you're the first one that they will call to say, I need help. Right. Okay. And, you and, pray and, 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 and so you just continue to pray for those and 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 we pray that, that that they finally do come to light and not go back. I struggle with that. I mean, the, I think I think a lot of us do. A lot of pride. There's a lot of there's a lot of history. A lot of patterns that we you know that we deal with in our in our daily lives, or the people that upset us, or family members that you know maybe uh, could do better in their lives for their for their own lives. I mean, it, it doesn't affect me. I just feel bad for them. You know, it's like, hey, I'm gonna I gotta continue doing what I'm doing with the Lord. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna continue to pray. And and lift up my family members that are that need it, um, and I'm going to encourage them. Man, it's so tough sometimes just to watch them just like yeah. constantly walk down that same path. Yeah, and you just want to love on them, but at the same time, you have they have to learn too. And so like, wh- how where do I, where do I kind of let them learn, you know? But lovingly, I, I think that that God has timing for everybody. Yeah, yeah sometimes and so we can't long. force it on them. All we got do is be an example. That's it hope they come around to it yeah i mean yeah and it's easy sometimes especially myself like i know exactly what he's talking about right you try to you know bring the bible study to the family to your friends and yeah. it's all no 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 right yeah and something goes down it's like okay i need prayer you know or right. whatever it is right and it's like easy to get frustrated but then again too it's like well i think part of the problem is they really haven't tasted and seen how good the lord is yeah. right once you taste and see how good he is you're going to want him all the time you're not going to want those pitfalls and then you have to come back to him and then you have a pitfall you're just gonna want to stay up there with him. That you know? com- I love that conviction. You know? Right. That conviction is what keeps me accountable. It's what keeps me going because, yeah, once I feel bad, I don't want to do these things. You know, because God at work in me in life and just just separating me. You know, and and yeah, it's frustrating. Sometimes you gotta hit the ball. Yeah. Sometimes because we don't know the fruit. Like you know what I mean? Like what we're doing here, it's gonna be on the internet for a while. You know what I mean? So when my kids. When I'm dead and gone and my kids see this, maybe they'll come to faith, you know? Maybe they'll believe. I don't know. I'm not going to see the fruit of this, you know? Or maybe my uh, family members, you know? Like, I don't know. Right. Only God knows. Yeah, you just keep being faithful and trust and leave it in God's yeah, hands. That's it. But on that note, too, there's another side of this, right? It's hard to try to change yourself, yeah. right? It's hard to try to just to say quit drinking on your own yeah. or whatever it is that you struggle with. That's You feel like it's keeping you from God because you're ashamed of it. But the truth is, you just got to come to God and give it to him, and he will help you change. You don't got to work it up yourself. You don't no. got to be a good person, but mm-hmm. approach him. Lay it at his feet. Come to him. Lay it at his feet. He'll give you his spirit, and he'll help you overcome this. Yeah. It's not going to be perfect day one. He might release you of something day one, or it might be something that you have to grow continually for months and a year's process. But either way, you got to come to him first yeah. and stop trying to do it on your own. It's never right. Gonna happen. And, you, and when you do do that, you'll realize whatever you're struggling with, I mean, it could be whatever. Mm-hmm. It, he will work you through it, and then right. you won't desire it anymore. And you'll thank him for it. Oh yeah, yeah. And thank him for that that trial, and tri- that trial and tribulation. At the end, you're gonna be like, yeah. Oh man, that was amazing. Now, now I know. Well, hopefully you'll be that way. Hopefully you'll find joy in it. Because I think once you understand the joy in all these things, it's it's almost like when you're playing a video game. It sounds weird, but. When you level up a character in a game, yeah. you're like, oh. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and, but you had to go do those side quests to get your guy. Yeah. Oh, he can't pick up that weapon yet. Yeah. Yeah, you're really speaking yeah, to you, the teenagers on this yeah, podcast. But, but that's what it is. It, it's, <laughs> sometimes, it, and God's timing is like that. Sometimes he's like, hey, put that on pause because I need you to go do this to prepare you for the next um, thing. All right, guys. So we're getting near to the end of uh, episode number six. I really hope and pray that you all uh, got a lot out of this and um, that it glorifies the Lord here. Um, but really quick, we're recording to today's episodes from uh, Nick's Garage here, uh, the studio where all the magic happens. As you can see, one of the camera angles that we had on um, showcases some of his artwork and what he does uh, to support himself and his family. So just wanted to plug him really quick. Uh, you can see the quality of everything he's doing. That's real wood right there, and uh, most of the stuff is made uh, by hand. And so want to shout him out. I believe you can find them on Instagram at uh, uh Matt Big Nick's Designs on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, that's pretty much it. But some, awesome. yeah, just Big Nick's Designs. It's just a small little garage CNC, and I appreciate you guys giving me a plug. I didn't even think about it, but glory to God, glory to God, pushing the kingdom.
So Dude, that's it. Awesome. Uh, I'd actually, I got one of those for, uh, my grandfather-in-law for Christmas. It was a great, great Christmas uh, present. He loved it. It was, I actually got to put his favorite verse on there. Um, so I really enjoyed it, but yeah, right. looking for something good. It, yeah. Something to hang oh, up. Oh, that was on uh, Jesus walking on water. Yeah. Huh? Jesus that walking was on water. Great. It was pretty cool. So, but all right. We hope you guys enjoyed your time with us, uh, for this episode. And Nick's going to close us out in prayer here. Lord, I just lift up today and then all the readers and then listeners out there in the podcast world. And I just appreciate them, Lord. Um, just continue to guide us in your word. Um, help us meditate on, on the things that we struggle with, Lord. Soften our hearts and uh, just encourage us and, and, and point out things throughout the day, Lord, that just that show us all the miracles and the beauty that you that you give us, Lord. I just ask this in uh, your son's holy and precious mighty name. Jesus, amen. Amen. Yeah.